Good day, everyone. We welcome you to our COSIDA 21 convention session. This one is on state of the NCAA live stats. I'm Chuck Young, Assistant AD for Communications at Maryville University in St. Louis, and I will serve as moderator for this great session. Before I introduce our panelists, we want to give special thanks to all of our corporate sponsors for their support of our organization and to all of our hashtag COSIDA 21 convention sessions and events. This, this session is sponsored by NCAA Live Stats by Genius Sports, and we thank NCAA and Genius Sports for their assistance advocacy for SIDs throughout the years. Before we meet this panel, we've got a great video for everyone to watch, and let's go ahead and roll it. All right, that was a great video. Uh, let's get it started here. Um, we've got a couple, we have three great uh, panelists here that are on our session. Our first is Jeff Williams, and Jeff has been at the NCA for more than 15 years, working in their statistics and media coordination office. Before coming to Indianapolis, he worked as assistant SID at Missouri State, and Jeff is a graduate of Wachita Baptist. Um, currently, he's getting ready for the uh, 2021 College Baseball World Series in Omaha. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, Chuck, uh, or good morning uh, to some of you as well. Uh, certainly appreciate everyone's time. Uh, appreciate everyone being here today. We're just excited that uh, you took the time out of your day to uh, join us on this session. Uh, we're really excited about where we are uh, with NCAA Life Stats. I mean, it's been it's been an exciting adventure. Uh, it's been a, a new challenge, I think, uh, that we've taken on over the last three to four years. Um, I think by and large, we didn't really know what to expect. Um, we did know that there would be some hiccups along the way. Um, and and we, we've experienced that. But overall, I mean, we've been really, really excited about where we are. Uh, we've got a number of sports already um, that have been implemented. And we'll certainly talk about that. Uh, our adoption rates are phenomenal. Um, and and we'll, we'll get into that in, in more detail. Um, I, I think the exciting thing is, is that, that um, as more and more people use it, more and more people get excited about the software. And so we're, we're really excited about that as well. We know there's still lots of questions um, that you guys are gonna ask. And uh, certainly at the end of the session, uh, we'll be around, we're gonna answer as many of those questions as, as you guys have. Um, one big question that, that I'll, I'll kind of touch on at the very beginning that I know everyone has, um, that we, we really are trying to still work through is, um, is there gonna be a license fee for the software in the coming year? And, and unfortunately, I still don't have a, a, a great answer on that. It's been a, um, it's been a huge undertaking, um, lots, of, uh, lots of excitement. Um, I think both sides, both Genius and NCAA, understand um, that, that where the, the schools are, it's really important that we provide that license, uh, that software license to you at no cost. And we're, we're certainly working um, on, on making that happen. But right now, we don't have that uh, situation resolved. Uh, both sides are working on, on it as hard as we can. Uh, but we, under, we understand the, the uh, necessity to get that done and, and we'll get that done uh, as quickly as we can. So unfortunately, uh, that's one question that maybe uh, 
you may have uh, that uh, you can probably, you don't have to put in the chat right now. That's the best uh, answer we have. Uh, we're working on it. We'll get, we'll get uh, information out to you as soon as we can, um, as soon as we have that. So I uh, just wanted to cover that up front. Uh, but otherwise, like I said, just really excited about where we are, about football really going being a full release um, here in the fall, and then getting to start work on um, baseball and softball software uh, as we continue to, to progress this relationship. We think it's been, a, been an exciting uh, time. And uh, we, we really look forward to not only this year, but the, but the, but the years to come in, the, in this relationship, because it's been, it's, been, it's been a tremendous asset, I think, to our, to our, uh, uh, to our work. So thank you, Chuck. All right, our next speaker is Oliver Wells, and he has led the NCAA Live Stats Initiative since its inception in 2018. He now oversees Genius Sports' rapidly expanding sports tech offerings for NCAA schools and conferences. Prior to Genius, he spent time as a U.S. Army intelligence officer, and Oliver boilers up as he's a graduate of Purdue University. Thanks, Chuck, and, uh, and thanks, Jeff, uh, for the intro there. Um, Really happy to be here with everybody uh, at COSIDA. You know, this is this is our fourth year already, you know, coming to the conventions, you know, starting in uh, the summer of 2018. And there was a lot of unknowns as we came into it, as Jeff, as Jeff said. But uh, you know, the best part has been working with everybody here. You know, COSIDA is, is our most important relationship. Um, you know, it is our, our biggest sponsorship we provide. Like it is we know the people that we're serving and we need to make sure that um, we're supporting them. And in, as we do that, you know, we, we really important as we work and build out these new solutions that were hand in hand with the SIDs. That's why you'll see the, the mantra, you know, built with SIDs for SIDs. I mean, that is the truth. We've got it going on uh, right now uh, with baseball and softball and beach volleyball. Um, this last year, as we rolled out football, um, in ice hockey, you know, that that is a, a weekly back and forth with those working groups, you know, not only in the year or two prior, you know, but also um, throughout the season, especially that first season, as we make sure we've got a good proven uh, solution. And it's, you know, adoption rates, I'll go over those, but they're, they're looking really good and really proud of that. And I really appreciate the support everybody's been given. I know it's been a hard last year, uh, definitely a hard spring for everybody uh, with everything going on at the same time. You know, getting towards the end of that, hopefully you can take, you know, a month off maybe and, you know, we can roll back into it coming up uh, in the fall. So um, as we look forward, you know, there's, there's still lots to come. So the product rollout at this point, you know, coming into this fall, you know, we'll have a beta season uh, for softball and baseball over the winter. Um, It'll be a very small group that we'll work with closely throughout the year to make sure we've got a good proven solution for you going into uh, the 23 season for baseball. Um, for beach volleyball, this last year, we, uh, we rolled out a kind of a post-match scoring solution. I'll talk a little bit more, uh, more about that later, uh, but looking into, um, you know, looking at 22, we're gonna have a live scoring solution for that as well. Um, for ice hockey and football, it was a great first year, lots of success. I'll talk about that some more. Um, and then looking forward, you know, we're not done, right? Not only are there new sports to come, right? We still have lacrosse and field hockey, um, but also, you know, there's improvements that we're looking at on all the sports. You know, we're looking at improvements for NSCM. Um, you know, your feedback's very important um, as we do that. So just to talk a little bit about the adoption rates. So. You know, I think the thing we're most proud about, you know, is you look at those division three uh, adoption rates, we're up over 70% already uh, for basketball and volleyball. Uh, we know soccer lags a little bit. I know that it's a bit because of uh, the crossover in previous solutions between field hockey and soccer. Uh, so uh, understand that piece of it. And then at the top end on the division one side, I mean, basketball 95% almost this last year. You know, expect that to tick up um, in volleyball and soccer in just their second year already at 84%. And when you look overall, you know, that's almost 80% of games, you know, across the board um, throughout Boston, when you put together basketball, volleyball and soccer. So these are two new sports this last year. Um, so it's a great first season, you know, with football, because of the high profile nature, the complexity of the stats, even more importantly, 
um, you know, we took that a very slow um, process. You know, it's been a, a couple of years we've been working on this. Um, and then this last fall, we worked with um, some FBS teams in the fall as they were playing. And then in the spring, we opened it up to FCS, D2, D3, uh, had over 103 teams uh, using that software this last season and, and uh, really prepared to go into the fall. Like we've worked through a lot, you know, we've, we've made a lot of improvements and we were really confident, you know, going into the fall. And, and we'll talk about that some more, you know, through the presentation. Uh, and then with ice hockey, this group has been great to work with, you know, the, the SIDs in the ice hockey community, it's a tight group, you know, and Mark Bedix from the staff, the NCAA has been really good uh, at managing that process. Um, and we had a really nice season with them and, and look forward to, you know, hopefully 100%, uh, you know, adoption going into the next year on the D1 side and, and really high overall. So my marketing department is, you know, hopefully they're not watching because they'll hate this slide, but I just think it's important to show you um, that we're not forgetting about those sports that are already out there. You know, we're, we're taking the feedback. David Petroff runs uh, the town halls, we run trainings, we get emails, we have support team, you know, in, in every quarter we go into and we work with our development teams to prioritize what new features we can get into all the sports. So these are just some of the things, probably the more high profile things over the last year, you know, that we've been able to add, you know, in basketball, right? Everybody's been asking, where's the floater? Okay, we've got that in there. You know, um, you know, we have the turnover type out of bounds. There's some things that, you know, have been feedback for a while and we're, and we're starting to add. And then there's some bigger features too, like in volleyball, you know, an enhanced insight report, right? That's kind of our advanced analytics report that's now available, you know, in the actual live stats application. Um, and then, you know, just some, some suggestions from, uh, from people to improve, like in soccer, you know, automatically recording the shot location from a free kick location is something that, you know, it was a good, maybe a bit of oversight at first on our side. And, and it was, uh, you know, identified by the user groups and the feedback. Uh, and so we've added that in as well. And as we go into NSCM, you know, um, one of the things, you know, that we rolled out for basketball this year and, and will likely roll out for other sports are tournament reports. So now if you have your conference tournament, you're able to get those, those tournament leaders, um, uh, for those tournaments. And really probably the biggest, you know, fundamental addition, you know, going into this next season has been, you know, the live clock integration. Um, so this last fall, uh, Genius Sports acquired a uh, company, Sportscast, and they have their score link devices, and then to call them the score bots. This takes the live data from your scoreboard controller, your scoreboard, and then integrates it uh, into NCA live stats. So for basketball, that means there's no more start stopping with the space bar and you're tied directly into the clock. So you've got the accurate live clock um, from the scoreboard and, and it works with any scoreboard. You know, the, these guys have been doing this for a long time. It's not a new product. Um, they've worked through all those instances. And this is something that we're providing free with NCA live stats um, for all the sports that once we do those integrations. So it's free for basketball right now. Um, and then for football and for football, it's really a big difference maker. So now you're gonna have the live official game clock from your scoreboard into live stats, which means that every, um, every play will be time stamped and in your play by play uh, with the official game clock for that time. And also be sent out through the XML and through our cloud APIs uh, to your partners. So for your game centers, now those are going to update after every play, right, with the correct time, uh, which is a big advantage. So with both of these, it's free, but we do need you to, you know, fill out the request form. Uh, after this session, uh, COSIDA will actually be sending that form out to everybody. Um, and I know we've been sending it out to our email list as well. Uh, so go on there, request the device, um, and then our team will follow up with you, make sure you got it installed and all ready to go. It's something really not only helps you, um, you know, have a better fan experience, but also just, you know, in some cases saves time and effort, you know, on your statisticians. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, NCAA live stats for football specifically, because you were making a big push right now to, to get ready for the fall. We had a great first season, uh, but we want to continue that. And like all of our live stats um, applications, you know, it is backwards compatible. We've been working with the scoreboard uh, providers with your live stats and game center providers, um, you know, all through the last couple of years and especially this last year, you know, as we had 103 teams uh, using it. So 
you know, it's backward compatible with your, with your, your stadium scoreboards. You don't need to go get upgrades, right? It can be done. We've made it all backward compatible. You know, um, it's going to produce that stat crew formatted, you know, pack file. Um, it's going to have the XML delivery. You know, it, it's going to seamlessly integrate into what you're doing and set you up for the future. Um, you know, it can be operated by two statisticians. You'll probably have a couple more callers, you know, if, if you can find a couple more bodies. But, you know, this is something that we built for D1 through D3, you know, and, and to be operated by um, really any size of crew. You know, again, just working with the um, working with the the working group for, of SIDs and statisticians has been very valuable with this. Um, Notre Dame's been a great you know first user in all of our sports. They've been very helpful you know throughout this last year as well. Um, but really, when I think about the most, I, I look at you know that comment from uh, Brian Kipley at Aurora. You know they you know, had a student jump in, and by the second half, you know they're able to operate the system right. I think we see that in all of our live stats applications is no longer that you have to be the expert user on the keyboard because you've learned all the codes, right? You can now put someone fairly fresh onto the actual live stats and the more, the more um, experienced person can be the caller. And that really frees up that person um, and gets more people involved in, in a more enjoyable way. Uh, so, you know, he's able to get a student out there on there, work it, have a couple of student callers, um, you know, and the game went really smooth and that's just really in their first game. Uh, so that's what we want to see. I mean, that's the best feedback when I hear something is like, hey, this was easy to learn, easy to use, you know, uh, and I can get new people involved in the process. So we, we've had a lot of promotion of this, you know, a lot of people have used it. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, uh, but a few things besides it being, you know, backward compatible and touchscreen and in, in uh, optimize, intuitive, and all those things that we try to do, you know, there are some new data fields that are being standardized as well in the collection. Um, so you're going to have play direction, uh, you're going to have targets, target yard line, uh, yak calculated off of that. Um, there's going to be a passing chart that you can print off into the game book as well. Um, and then when you bring in the live clock integration from Sportscast, you're going to have that, uh, that accurate timestamp on it. Um, and there's really improved roster management penalty calculation as well. And uh, it's, been, it's been something that we're really proud of and the solution we've worked on for a long time. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Jeff and then, and, and, and then Dave. And actually maybe, maybe Chuck, you wanna give your intro to Dave at this point. I'll turn it over to him and, and, and Jeff and uh, David are gonna go through you know, some of the keys to success, you know, both leading up to game day and then on game day with NCA Live Stats. Thanks, Oliver. Our, our third panelist is uh, David Petroff, and he spent over 20 years as a coach SID and administrator at both Division I and Division III programs. Since 2018, he's served as support and implementation manager USA for Genius Sports, with his primary responsibility being training, development, and support of all NCA Live Stats products. He is a graduate of both the University of Wisconsin and the University of Minnesota. So as he says, he never loses Paul Bunyan's ax. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Chuck. I'll read me my next slide, thanks. Um, so uh, I'll start and Jeff, if you have something to add here, um, but um, keys to sex with success with NCA Live Stats. Um, managing the NCA database is really important with your roster and your schedule information. Um, that is where the, our information comes from. When we load a game key into the software, it comes from the NCA database. That, that, is our, that is our single source of truth, we like to say, that that is our official record. So uh, having rosters up to date, ha uh, having schedules up to date is, becomes really important. It'd be especially important in football um, just because rosters are larger to deal with and uh, you do have the, uh, the um, challenge of duplicate numbers. And, all, and in football, we know that coaches like to change numbers and pass jersey numbers around. So, um, you know, it will, be a, it will be somewhat of a weekly task uh, to make sure your roster is up to date. Um, and it will, uh, especially this first year, it'll take some coordination with your opponent 
um, to, because everyone's going to have different levels of familiarity with NCA live stats and using the NCA database. There's going to be some schools that are very much on top of their NCA database roster. There's going to be other schools that are lagging behind a little bit and aren't, uh, aren't keeping that up to date as well. Um, scheduling uh, also becomes important, especially when we're talking about televised games, uh, games that get into the um, games that get into the uh, schedule as TBD. Um, at some point, uh, when you know that uh, time, uh, it's important to get that entered into the NCAA database because that game time syncs with uh, Genius's servers and the NCA database to make sure that uh, the system works uh, properly when it should. Leaving a game TBD can create issues with your uh, data downstream and things like that. Uh, on game day, go yeah, ahead, sorry. Jeff. Oh, sorry, David. I thought yeah, you would want oh, me to talk, touch on this, but but yeah. I, I think I think we really tried as a as a staff and and and. In our uh, in our NCA database uh, uh, applications and and, and uh, uh, forms to really try to make this easier for you guys, the user as well. I know it's not perfect. I know there's always ways we can improve it. Um, we're going to continue to try to work with um, with the website providers um, and try to come up with ways to to sync that information up, sort of how we do at the on the initial uh, schedule submission um, at the beginning of the years. I know this year was a really odd year, and different people started their seasons at different times. Uh, but the great thing is we have those forms in place that now allow you to enter your schedule, to edit your schedule at any time, uh, to, to make edits to rosters at any time. And so certainly, you know, if you have feedback, if you have uh, questions on how to do that, we'd be happy to, to provide the information uh, to allow you to enter your schedules, enter your rosters, make those changes. Uh, because we, that, as David said, it's really important um, not only that you do it for games that you're scoring at your venue, but also you do it for your if your opponent is going to be using NCAA Live Stats. It's really important that you keep those rosters and those schedules in sync. And I think uh, getting used to it in, a, in sports like basketball and football, maybe where the schedules don't change as much, um, it is really important because once we get to baseball, softball, um, even even soccer for, to some extent, when those schedule starts to change on a regular basis, that's going to be really important that you kind of get in the habit of changing that. And as I said. We'll continue to iterate um, and make changes so that it, it's, it's easier for you. But, but as David said, really important that you keep that information in sync and not so much for the NCAA as it is for you that you're able to score your game uh, correctly and, and all of the information is up to date. Great. And game day, a um, uh, couple of important things. When you're loading your game, it's important to make sure that you are uh, – that you're going through those the pregame checks on the the um, uh, the system checks page, um, getting your computer clock synced to the world clock is important, and the system check will check that for you. Um, if you've ever had difficulty connecting to the webcast the, to the downstream feed and and things were going out, oftentimes it's because your system clock wasn't synced and you you either uh, ignored or you didn't see the warning. Uh, it's a real, it's simple to do. Um, you should try to make sure your IT is giving you permission to adjust that clock as needed. Um, I get asked often about flags. Uh, do I need to clear and resolve flags? Yes, you need to clear and resolve flags. Now, um, in volleyball, uh, it's, it's, re it's a requirement. You can't even finalize unless you clear and resolve flags. Um, that works well for volleyball. In basketball and soccer, there are some flags that are going to pop up for things that turn out to not be errors. For instance, you have a player who, who gets a, a fifth foul and then gets hit with a technical and they have six personal fouls. The uh, software will flag that, but in that case, it's not actually incorrect. You can have six personal fouls in certain circumstances. So there are things, but things like uh, substitutions and uh, um, substitution errors and things like that, those do really need to be cleaned up. Uh, when that data goes to the NCA, oftentimes if those substitution errors aren't, aren't corrected, they'll see uh, playing time mismatches, playing time inaccuracies, and then it takes more time to come back to you and ask you to make those changes or uh, than, than it would be to, to, to fix them up front. Um, in football, uh, you have both flagged plays and you're going to have incomplete, uh, inform incomplete actions. You're going to notice the, uh, 
So the incomplete actions are yellow icons, flags are red. All of those really need to be cleaned before you finalize the game um, or at least, or finalize and then uh, uh, immediately go into your post-game editing and clean those up if necessary. Um, the reason being is if, you, if you're missing incomplete actions, it can really affect stats. So if you, you know, an example is if there's a forced fumble and you weren't able to, you didn't quite get the yard line where the fumble is forced, that's okay. The software allows you to skip through that and continue on. Um, but at some point you need to fill that in because if you don't, now we're going to end up with the, the yardage being uh, out of sync, the yardage not being consistent. Uh, same thing, uh, you you forget to enter uh, who the receiver was on a, on a completed pass. That's fine. We understand it's fine. Sometimes we miss it because we have to go fast, but you do need to pay attention to those incomplete action icons, come back and fix it. Otherwise, passing yards and receiving yards will not be will not be uh, in sync and you'll get flags. The NCA then can't ingest your statistics. So it is really important to take that time uh, to correct flags and incomplete actions um, at the end of quarters, at the end of halves, at the end of games, whenever it might be. Uh, you probably received an email uh, Monday. Uh, hopefully you did. Well, you did if you're in our, on our opt-in list. And I encourage everyone to sign up for our opt-in list. Um, NCAManager.com, this is the only website we have. So oftentimes people ask me, hey, where do I find this? The answer is it's, it's here. It's always on NCAManager.com. If it's not there, then I haven't published it yet and I probably need to. But just about everything you're looking for, asking for is there. So under the No More tab, that is our knowledge base. You click for a training webinar, click NCA Live Stats Training Webinars, and you'll see the whole schedule. We have 12 currently scheduled uh, from June 20, week of June 28th through September 1st. So you can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and uh, use that uh, to register for a webinar. Feel free to register for more than one. It's okay. Um, I know some of you like to just click all 12 and and register for that. That's fine too. Um, but uh, but um, but they are really valuable for you. This is a, a spot a, a spot where you really get to learn, and you have one on one time with uh, with uh, with me or someone else to 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 help walk you through it. Um, the questions we get from there often shape the software as we go. We find things that we're like, you know, that's a good point, or we come across a situation that maybe doesn't work quite how we want it to. And we get to and we uh, get to make those changes. If you can't make a live webinar, we always have a recorded webinar available for each sport. That's in the in the knowledge base as well. Uh, and in addition, take some time and just click through that knowledge base. You'll find all the tutorials. We have a lot of tutorial videos, two to three minute videos that just explain one particular situation or one particular action. Also, if you like reading instead of watching videos, there's an FAQ that puts a lot of the uh, a lot of that information into words, um, and also some resources uh, like football. We had a user create a uh, a sheet for a handwritten backup. So if you like to use a handwritten backup with football, um, uh, uh, that is there as well. Um, I do encourage you to share that to share the registration link with others, student workers. Uh, hired crew, whoever you might have, uh, because I think they they'll they'll all uh, they'll all gain from it. Um, yeah, uh, our support uh, on ncamanager.com. Like I mentioned, the training videos, full length training games with the caller, uh, the FAQs, recorded webinars, the webinar and training sessions. We also run some town halls occasionally. Um, David and myself manage the uh, support team. Um, and uh, go, on, go on the next slide. Um, you can always reach us, ncamanager.com, uh, email and website and live chat. Um, please do take advantage of those resources. Uh, I, know, uh, I know a lot of you guys like to try to hit me on Facebook and that's okay too. Um, I try not to do too much one-on-one -on -one support on Facebook because that's not what it's really for. I try to answer general questions on Facebook. But if you have a question and you need uh, someone to answer it for you, call these guys, call our support team, email the support team, 
and they will uh, they will get you those answers. Okay, um, so I don't mind interacting with people on face with with everybody on Facebook, and and it's fun and all that. But um, but do you take advantage of, of the support tools and the support personnel because they do a really great job. All right, thanks, David. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate all the work you, you're doing on this. You know, it's uh, he's put a lot of time into this over the last uh, few years, and and you know, especially with uh, in state live stats for football as you're training up for this year. Uh, there are two training games with full length training videos available, and they're built into the system too, so you don't have to set up any rosters or anything. You just download it, click start new training game. It's synced up exactly with the video that's available on the training resources. So it's a really good way to uh, to get some extra uh, keyboard time in. Or I guess, sorry, touch screen time in. All right, so what's coming up next? Um, baseball, I'll just have a little bit of talk about, talk about softball and baseball, um, you know, and give you kind of the, the rollout of that uh, solution. So um, we did delay this this last year, you know, as COVID started, um, but we're back at it. Uh, we restarted uh, both our work with the development team uh, and with the, the working group with the NCAA staff, um, Statistic or official scores uh, and uh, SIDs. So going into this season um, for the for 22, it'll be a beta season. Like I said, it'll work very closely with a small group um, from our working group, most likely going into the season to make sure that not only is the live game experience good, but the you know the hardest part, the backwards compatibility, you know, getting that correct as well, and making sure it's speeding all your vendors. Um, you know. Just like everything else, you know, we are going to look at, you know, what, what can we record? As you might imagine, you know, we're looking at hit locations, hit types, be able to produce, um, provide spray charts, um, make sure we can do all the in-game management of delays and reviews, um, every pitch, every swing, you know, while balancing in that with the capability that you have, right? So we work with, as, as we always say, you know, D1 through D3 crews, you know, all, all sorts of different, um, you know, people as we work with these working groups, we make sure it's something that can work for everybody. And there's a lot of balance to that. And right now that's what we're going through the working group with. We just sent them some, uh, some prototypes this morning to look through. Uh, they're giving us their feedback and, and looking forward to kind of taking the next step as we get through the end of the summer uh, and into the fall. And then beach volleyball. Uh, so this last season, I said we had a post-match scoring solution. Uh, and then going into this upcoming season, there'll be a mobile scoring solution. So uh, a little mock-up on the right. I'm sure that'll change a bit as we go forward. Uh, but, you know, the ability on a mobile device, so your phone, tablet, internet connection, you know, whether it's a cell connection uh, or otherwise, and be able to, you know, record that pair and then get your overall pair and dual results as you go forward and deliver that data straight from the cloud back to the NCA as the official record of the game um, and then access those reports through NSCM as we uh, currently do with all the other sports. And then we are looking at uh, some future advancements for the NCA school and conference manager. So this is very much still in the works. Uh, this summer we're doing a proof of concept, you know, looking at what technology approaches might work best but we really want to give you more flexibility um, to what you can do in NSCM. You know, right now, you know, we wanted to make sure we gave you the reports that you're used to seeing uh, across all the sports, both the season, you know, conference reports, uh, inter career reports. And as we look at the next, what NSCM could become, you're looking at user-defined reports, right? The ability to go in and create a custom report, you know, share it with your staff, save it, maybe share it with others in the community. Um, and, and really be able to build out more, you know, creative and custom charts and reports for uh, the media, for your coaches, for your fans. Um, and, and with that, the ability to do some custom querying, right? We want to be able to know, you know, in more detail, you know, exactly who the leaders are in very specific categories or some advanced analytics. Um, right now, we're just kind of working through the initial stages of that. Going into this winter, we'll start kind of working with a working group as we do in other sports. Uh, and then we're hoping to be able to do a release in the next fall. Uh, they're all kind of to be dependent on how we move forward, you know, over the next year. But I just want to make sure you guys know, like, we have not, you know, forgot about, um, you know, those promises in the past around NSCM and, and working uh, to get that um, even more flexible going into the future. And before we take questions, 
just want to give you an update overall with, with Genius Sports. There's been a lot of movement. You've probably seen a lot of things in the news. Um, as we mentioned, the acquisition of Sportscast this last December. Um, in April, we did uh, you know, win the official rights deal uh, with the NFL. So we're doing a lot of work with the NFL um, on their fan engagement uh, tools. And then in going, and then even more recently, you know, acquisition of Second Spectrum and Fan Hub. Second Spectrum is the official you know, optical player tracking solution of the NBA, the English Premier League, Major League Soccer. Um, and then Fan Hub is a free to play, you know, think of trivia, quizzes, polls. And overall, Genius Sports is very much transforming from a sports data company to a full sports technology company focused on fan engagement. So as we move forward, um, you look forward to serving, you know, the conferences and schools, you know, in that manner, um, you know, as we go into the next years. So with that, appreciate the time. I'll turn it back over to Chuck and happy to take your questions. Okay, yes, we're about halfway through our session now. We'll try to get to questions. Um, once again, go ahead and submit them in the Q&A and uh, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, the first one, let's start off with the so about questions about compatibility with Stack Crew for uh, season and career stats. So I guess I'll first talk that just to reiterate, because I didn't earlier. So for football and for all the sports at this point, there are all season, career, uh, and conference reports available on the NCAA School and Conference Manager. So you can pull individual career reports for football. Um, you do the same for, for all the other sports. Just want to make sure that was uh, made clear. And then maybe, David, you can answer a little more on the backward compatibility piece. Yeah, so the um, the we don't we don't create any kind of career file uh, for Stack Crew. We create the pack file. So the pack file, uh, when you, you download the pack file for each game, you load that into your, into your Stack Crew software and you accumulate your season that way and generate career files there. Um, so the, uh, as far as we, we don't create a season XML, which I, which, uh, I know people have, have discussed in length, we don't create any kind of career files. We just create the pack file uh, and so generating the season, the, generating your career out of Stat Crew is based on those pack files. Um, so uh, to my knowledge, uh, um, when, we do when we do have pack file issues, we've cleaned them up. I don't know that we've cleaned up any in the past, but if all your pack files are solid, then your career, uh, then your career directory should also be solid. And, and, and I'll add to that um, probably the next um, the next logical question is, you know, what about for seasons before, uh, you know, the NCAA has data or before uh, uh, we had NCAA live stats and the NCAA uh, on our side, we are working on solutions um, within our current apps, uh, loading XML files the way you would have loaded game files in the past. So if, if we haven't, uh, if it was a season where we didn't collect game by game data, we're going to create a system that allows you to enter um, the XML files for those games from Stat Crew that you can upload um, into uh, into the into our app into our database, and we'll go into the uh, uh, the the Genius Stats engine, which then powers the NSCM reporting and things like that. So so we're going to create a way for you to um, to to put those seasons that we don't currently have game by game data for, and put that into your NCAA Live Stats, and we'll probably build that out on the NCAA side just so it's a place where you're used to going. We don't have to create something new, um, or we don't have to ask the Genius team to create something new that you can upload those files to, and then have to, they have to extract the XMLs in that way. Since we already have that process in place, we're gonna try to build that out. It was something that was on our list of things to get done. Um, and like so many other things in the last 15 months, uh, we kind of had to put it aside for, the, for, for a short time, but it is definitely something we've already got the, we've already got the uh, sort of the shell, the tools in place. We just need to kind of create that process and, and communicate that out exactly what that will look like. We are already uh, transferring data from previous seasons that we have single game data for. Uh, we have, we've begun the process of doing that for football. Um, so we, we expect that by this fall, there will at least be five to six years of uh, football data in the uh, Genius Sports database. So you'll be able to create career reports for the vast majority of players that are gonna be playing this season. Um, within your NSCM reports. That's not completely done yet. Um, so, I, you know, it, there could be something that causes a problem and, and, and slows that down a little bit. 
it does take a couple of weeks for each season to transfer just because of the amount of data, the amount of uh, the stats in a sport like football. We already know it takes three to four weeks, I think it was, per season uh, to, to push that data over. But we're, we're working on getting that done this summer. And so I know that's something that's being done. Same thing with hockey. Uh, and we've already done a lot of that for basketball. So there are some catch up that we have to do to get previous seasons. But I would just say look for that over the next um, over the next year as something that we might be able to uh, start allowing you to upload that data that maybe we don't currently have in our database and you'll be able to upload it in our system. It'll transfer directly to Genius. Next question. Is there a way to add shots to the screen for soccer scoreboard operator keeps asking me how many shots I have and I can't tell them without having to open up the box score. Uh, I think that's a great idea. Uh, we actually do that at NCA ice hockey. Uh, right now we have shots displayed right on the main entry screen. Uh, so I've made a note of that and I'm going to submit that for a, uh, for a, uh, for an improvement. Um, I don't know when that might happen, but I, I will definitely get that submitted submitted. I think that's a great idea. Another quick one. How do we get into the beta testing pool for baseball or softball? Uh, you can email NCA support at geniusports.com and ask. Uh, like I said, there, it's going to be a rather small group um, for, uh, this, for this upcoming beta season in 2022. Um, so I wouldn't, uh, um, I, I wouldn't, we, we just can't, we'll always take your feedback, but we just can't use everybody in the, in the, in the beta group that wants to. Um, but, uh, you can, uh, please send an email to NCA support at geniusports.com and they'll, uh, pass your name along. Okay. Here's one that, uh, I'd like to have the answer to when will, uh, lacrosse be coming down the road? <laughs> I, Oliver, you want me to answer that one? Uh, <laughs> it, it, I, look, I, I would say lacrosse is, is sort of probably on deck. I know that we have to, we have to talk with, uh, the, uh, the genius team and our leadership have to get together and really come up with a plan on what, what sports are next. Um, obviously we know the sports that we haven't done yet. You know, lacrosse is, is one uh, that we really want to get done. Field hockey is really important because we know the tie that that goes to soccer. Um, so, so that's another sport that we want to get done. The nice thing about, I think those sports um, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to say that anything is easy uh, because, uh, because it, it, obviously there's a lot of work that goes into all of these, but the nice thing about those sports is, we kind of have a, a, a plan that we have, we have some, you know, a, a shell in place with soccer, with hockey, a lot of those, a lot of those elements that are already in those sports, a lot of those categories are already in place. Um, and so the, the, you know, the, the way it's going to tie to the NCAA database is a little bit simpler. Um, so we, we feel like we can move pretty quickly, um, pretty uh, on those, but certainly we still have to have people, um, to do that. And so I, I don't know, Oliver, if you want to get more into how that process works, but, uh, but that'll be something that we discuss. And I would expect that um, once we get the baseball softball uh, going, that lacrosse will be pretty soon, uh, will be pretty soon after that. I, I just don't want to put a time on it for right now. Yeah, I think Jeff, I mean, definitely something we'll, we'll work on together and we look forward to getting, getting started with the next, uh, next sport. Um, you know, most likely we'll across, but, you know, we'll, we'll kind of let everybody know how that, what that plan is. Kind of a follow-up to the, uh, I guess, past seasons. People want to know about the volleyball and soccer, um, I guess, historical data kind of following up behind basketball. Yeah, the career reporting in the NSCM is already there. Um, so, uh, so I don't know if uh, maybe uh, Jim – Jim, maybe you just hadn't checked it recently, but it, the volleyball was there early in the season and soccer, I think, was there at the beginning of the season, certainly the beginning of the spring season. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, that information is there. So, and again, it goes back to if you're looking for data from before the NCAA had, had, uh, had, had game data, uh, that'll be the same. It'll be a similar process that we, we talked about. We'll, we'll have an upload page where you can upload uh, data for we have a lot of the schedules for previous years even if we don't have game by game data um, and so you can just put it in and match that information up the biggest challenge for us right now as we've looked into this is making sure rosters match up uh, for those older seasons and so that's going to probably be our biggest challenge as it is in a current season to be fully transparent that rosters roster maintenance roster matchups are always our, our biggest challenge and so uh, you know we don't have a 
you know, we don't have a, a system where the, the rosters are, are uniform across the association like we wish we had uh, or like a lot of the professional leagues have the opportunity. And when you have hundreds of thousands of players in those in those databases, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, I, I'm not going to, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie to you about that. It, it, that is our biggest challenge, but certainly something that we'll work through. I uh, got a question about uh, Mac versions for NLS. What's uh, the status on that? Yeah, you know, right now we don't support Mac. You can run a virtual machine. Uh, that is, you know, we have seen people be very successful with that. So you could run a virtual machine on your Mac, but we don't support it natively uh, for Mac at this time. And I wouldn't expect, you know, we're not gonna have anything for this fall or next spring. It's definitely something that's uh, always, you know, on our minds in terms of, uh, of a decision there. So, you know, the more feedback we get, you know, as we move forward, especially once we start getting out all the sports, we can start going back and looking at what maybe uh, we can do on that side. Uh, next question. After two years of using it, I'm convinced the possession in soccer is not worth the effort it takes to input the data. And would there be a way to perhaps toggle it off on future reports? You know, I, I think this is just an overall good, uh, a good topic, right? It's, we want to, we want you to see the value in the data that you're collecting and not only you to see the data, but also your full entire, you know, athletic department, your conference, your fans, um, you know, and that's why we, we always try to create reports that take advantage of that uh, data. We also, um, you know, in basketball, almost all the analytics companies for your coaching solutions are, are taking, uh, you know, the official NCAA data now instead of, instead of taking it from unofficial sources, you know, and, and a lot of these things you're collecting is going straight into that, in, in, uh, into those, um, those vendors. And, you know, we want to, I think there's two greatest things I say like when I, I feel the happiest about, you know, doing this job. And one is, you know, working with the SIDs and them saying that, you know, it's, it's easy to learn intuitive. I can get a new person on there. And the second though, is when, you know, either the school or conference or a vendor comes and says like, hey, let's create something new with this data point that you're doing. And let's, let's unlock a new opportunity for fan engagement. Let's unlock a new opportunity for coaching. And so, We'd love to work with your vendors. Please send them to us. Anybody that you know you think might have a use for this data, we want to get it in their hands, um, and we want them. We we don't want to have these situations where you're saying, "Why am I collecting this?" You're collecting it, and we want you to say, "Like, man, I'm collecting this because look at this great thing um, that we can do with it." And 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 I'll also say, I, I think Oliver touched on this. I, you know, a lot of this is, you know, I, when we started this whole process, it wasn't just let's let's create a solution that gives you the same information that you have today right like it was let's create a solution that allows us the opportunity to collect more data even if we don't collect it today but maybe that allows us to collect more data that then we'll be able to use five years from now or 10 years from now but gives us that a flexibility gives us some elasticity if you will uh, to kind of expand that data that we're collecting and maybe and maybe it's not valuable to you or you know maybe there's a lot of people it's not valuable to but but we, we i think thinking in terms of, is there gonna be value five years from now? Or is it going, is, does it provide value to somebody else? I think those are things that, that are really important as well. And so I get it, like we were all SIDs, right? And so I remember running the scoreboard and the PA and trying to do stats all at once, I get it. Like, um, and so now if I have to click more often in soccer, it takes away from me being able to do scoreboard and PA. So I, look, we, we've all been there and I get the challenges, but. Just think of it like that. Like it's not just for today that we're building these these solutions out. We're we're also thinking, you know, five to ten years from now, what are the things that are going to be really important? Um, got a question about season XML. Can we get those, please? We need it. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll also say the same thing because I'd like to have one too. Okay, but. I think I've answered this question a lot, um, but I'll answer it another time. Um, so. Uh, we decided two, two years, two to three years ago, we decided in consultation with Sidearm uh, that we were, that Genius was not going to produce the season XML. The reason was that the, the most valuable use, the, the main usage of that season XML file was for Sidearm users. They import, this, they import the season XML into, into Sidearm and it populates their career statistics on their player bios. Okay, so Sidearm at that time 
said, listen, we, this is how we set it up because it made sense at the time, but this is not how we intend to do this going forward. They, and I, and I, I feel, I feel like I'm speaking for sidearm here and I don't want to do that. But um, so sidearm said, what we're going to do is recreate the career by the career file so that it just populates as you load each game XML. When I load the game XML, it populates the career file. So it's taken them time because changes like this take time, but they're in the process of changing that uh, system. Uh, so that when you just load a game XML into the sidearm system, it updates the career BIOS automatically and there's no extra step with the season XML. So because sidearm was rendering that season XML file essentially obsolete, uh, in a, a period of time, in a short period of time, uh, there wasn't any reason for us to spend development time developing that piece that was going to be obsolete soon, and we can use that time to do other things. So that's why we haven't developed a season XML file, and that's why we're not going to develop a season XML file because Sidearm is going to render it obsolete with their newest changes. I feel like I've asked David that question in the past. I'm just trying to. <laughs> Just stick up for all my uh, fellow SIDs. I, I've answered that question <laughs> many, many times, but it's okay. Uh, one regarding the uh, the Sportcast. Um, we have a score bug device from Sportscast, which we use for video streams. One, would it uh, would your device replace that one? Or two, uh, what is the easiest connection process for a PC? So um, your existing score. Uh, your existing score, uh, score link device or whichever device you have from Sportscast uh, should work with NCA Live Stats. I would recommend calling uh, Sportscast support and, um, and, walking, and uh, just walking through it. There might be uh, an update to the Score Connect app. There's a Score Connect app that runs alongside it uh, right now. You might need an update to that to make sure it works with NCA Live Stats. But all of that should work very capably uh, um, uh, with that if you already own a Sportscast device. Yeah. Uh, it was the second yeah. part. Yeah, go ahead. Easiest connection process for a PC. Um, the, uh, um, the, uh, are we talking about the sports, connecting the Sportscast to the PC? I guess I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so generally speaking, the Sportscast device connect doesn't connect to the PC at all. It connects to uh, either the control rack for your scoreboard, which if you have a larger, more modern scoreboard, you might have a control room with a control rack. That's the best place to plug in your uh, Sportscast device um, because it can be plugged there and you essentially set it and forget it and it stays there forever. The other option is you can plug it directly into the scoreboard console um, uh, on, you know, at the scores table. Um, and that works, that works just as well. It's just a little more uh, flexible because that prop might get uh, unhooked and rehooked, uh, you know, multiple times. Um, but, and then that, and then from that NCA live stats uh, in, on the system checks page, you'll uh, choose your device. It'll search for your device. As long as you're on the same network subnet, Okay, you might need some IT help to make sure that both the device and your NCA Live Stats computer are on the same network. But when they're on the same network, then the NCA Live Stats computer can connect to that device and run your clock for you. All right, uh, we'll take care of our conference SID types. Will further development of conference reports be forthcoming? Can conference reports be offered as HTML as opposed to just PDF? So we, we're happy to take uh, you know more suggestions and you know what additional reports you'd like to see on the conference side at this point. You know, the conference reports are out for all the sports, including uh, you know the new ones, football and ice hockey. Uh, it's not going to be offered uh, as HTML. Um, we don't have that capability, um, but uh, we have had that request. And you know, as we look at the next version, you know, of, of NSCM. You know, hopefully that would that would involve being able to have more flexibility in your conference reporting as well. So if you want to create a custom template there, um, but if there's something big gap that you see now, like hey, this is a report we use all the time, but it's not available. Please, you know, send that uh, send that to us so we can we can take a look at it. Uh, we got a sidearm stats question for volleyball. There is no running play by play 
in the um, in the program? Is there a way to get that fixed so that fans can see and opposing SIDs can see the play by play as it goes real time? In the sidearm game center, um, um, I'm pretty. I don't know. I guess I would have to ask sidearm um, uh, what they need if if they're not seeing if they're not um, if sidearm isn't seeing something they need to display that in their game center, um, then uh, then. Uh, they should let us know and we can work on rebuilding the API, if it's API or the XML, uh, we can work on uh, adjusting that API and XML. Um, but but I haven't heard that. Either. Yeah, I haven't heard it either. So I maybe that maybe that was something that was happening early on. Um, or yeah, if you give us more information on it, contact support, we can look into it for you. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a little less than 10 minutes. So once again, we'll try to get to as as many as we can. Um, one's about uh, starting lineups or goalkeepers sent out the live stats prior to the first stat entry as an indication that the game connection is working. Um, it'd be nice to have a little time before to troubleshoot if necessary. Yeah, so we're talking about soccer, I'm guessing. Um, uh, the thing I would direct you to would be uh, on the NSCM in the knowledge base, scroll down to the bottom in the in arena utility section and there is a uh, there is a article, a document in there called "When to Connect My Live Stats," and it gives you a very specific procedure and tells you exactly when the XML will start to be produced. Um, uh, if you follow that procedure, uh, you'll get the XML um, before you go into your before you're uh, into kickoffs and stuff. If you um, and I don't, and I, I can't recite the procedure off the top of my head, but if you go through the steps in order in that document, um, you will get the XML in advance. Um, a lot of people don't do that. They, they um, basically it involves getting your in arena utility on and set up and active before you load the game. Uh, that's the basic gist of it. Most people do things, do that in the other way. They load the NSA live stats and then turn on in arena utility and then, at, uh, and then at that point, if they've already set up the game and gone through all the pregame steps, then the next time the interim utility sends anything is gonna be the kickoff. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Read that document and it goes through the order on how to, on how to get that XML file to pr be produced earlier. Um, let's see, will it ever be an option to select location for some actions in soccer or basketball? It has been said many times before, it's hard to use some of these programs is a one-man shop and that would help alleviate some of the issues. Um, I don't think it's gonna be offered as an option. The, the location data uh, is an important feature of NCA Live Stats and it's the reason we can, do, um, we can do the things in basketball that we can do with shot charts, that we can do with uh, the shot areas, things like that. Um, it's the reason we can produce a soccer shot chart, something that's that's never really been reliably done before. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to be it's going to be an option. Um, um, you know, I do. I, I know that you're you're sometimes uh, you're sometimes stuck in a position where you have to multitask during games, and I understand that can be a challenge, as Jeff mentioned before. Um, but um, uh, but no, I, I, I think that location data is important and that's, uh, and that's, that's going to remain. Okay. We're almost at the end. We'll try to get to one or two more here. Uh, hockey question. Can the requirement of setting a hockey rosters by position line pregame be removed? I'm a D3 SID and I'm lucky to get a handwritten line chart 30 minutes before the game's going through is, uh, is time consuming. Yeah, it, it is too it is too time consuming, and that is true. Um, uh, I don't think the lines are going to be. Uh, um, I don't think it's going to be removed as a, as a requirement. It's going to be something we need to do because we need to do it to generate proper XML files. Um, but uh, but we are restructuring that uh, that lineup entry page, and it's going to look a lot easier. Uh, it's going to look more. Um, it's going to be more of a, a, a drag and drop chart that you can um, more like the uh, on the football, the uh, pre-selected players list 
where you can click a button and, and drop a player into that slot, it's going to look more like that. So it'll be, it'll be much, much easier than it is now. Um, yeah, the, dro the, the drop down menus with the positions and the lines is, 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 was, it was a, a reasonable solution at the moment, but we know we can do better. And, and so we're going to uh, develop a better interface for that. Okay, let's try to get this last question in. Um, will pitch by pitch be required in baseball slash softball? Yeah, at this point, pitch by pitch um, will be required. And, you know, something where, you know, we start, we start uh, the whole process with a discovery day with, with the SID statisticians, rule staff. Um, and that was, that was something that everybody felt was, uh, was important to have. Um, and so that's going to be a part of it unless we get, you know, some, some wild adjustment, you know, halfway through from the group. I don't know if Jeff has any other comments specifically on baseball. No, I, the only thing I would say is I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about, um, I think there, there've been some requests. It's, it's sort of a, I don't know, it's sort of a middle ground, I guess, Oliver, like you said, we, we talked a lot, a lot about this um, with our working group and our, in our discovery day. Um, and there was some interest in like, what about, you know, even pitch location and stuff like that. It wouldn't be anything like that. Um, it would be, you know, ball strike, uh, foul, that sort of thing. It, it would, it would really just be more on a, on a pitch count type basis. And, and again, it gives you, if you think, you know, moving forward, it does give you more data points to look at. So you could do things like what a batter is doing on three, two counts and stuff like that. I'm not saying that's valuable to you, but I, I do know that there are some people that that's valuable to. And there are some downstream consumers that, that find that information valuable. And Oliver's talked a great deal about how uh, some of the coaching tools that your, your schools are using are using this official data, which is what we want them to do. Um, and so, uh, so, so those are the reasons that we're doing that. We're not just doing it just to have more data points. I mean, there, there's really logical reasons for us to put that inf information in, in there. And we do think that's something that's going to be important to have. Yeah, I get the concern, though, you know, if you're playing uh, these spring break games and you're not there and the other SAD is not there, you just may not have that information when you need to go back and enter the game in. Um, and, uh, and, and so there will be, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to work on solutions for how we enter games like that when they're, when they're done after the fact and, th and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's a great point David makes. I'm sorry. I, I, we should have even talked about that. We, we, we are working through some of those nuances on, on each sport and certainly baseball, softball goes on a spring, a spring break trip. All you get is a, is a score sheet. How do I, how do I enter the stats for that? So that's certainly something that is front of mind for for us and for the for the development team that they're they're working through on some of those unique circumstances like that. I'm I'm glad you brought that up, David. That's a great point. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, I think we've actually gone over time, so uh, we'll we'll bring this great session to an end. Uh, thank you, DNCA Live Stats by Genius Sports for supporting this session, and thanks to Jeff, David, and Oliver. Um, we ask that all attendees please take a moment to fill out the short survey for this session and please fill out all sur surveys for all the sessions you attend. We do need your feedback and evaluation to continue to grow our professional sports development program. Find the surveys on the session page in the attendee hub. It's a blue icon in the upper right hand corner or on your mobile app. Also, while you're in the attendee hub, please take time to visit our corporate partner and live exhibitors hub. There are many exhibitors there ready to greet you with incentives on their products services and giveaways. So please show them our thanks. Reminder, there are two more sessions still left uh, and a Hall of Fame tribute on tap. At 2 p.m. Eastern, join the live session on recrafting your culture, converting conversations to actions on diversity, equity, and inclusion with the terrific panel of athletic directors, commissioners, and senior athletic leaders. At 3.30 p.m. Eastern, there is a pre-recorded session on compliance issues and social media rules that SIDs need to know. This is an extremely informative discussion with senior compliance leaders from all three of our divisions. Lastly, at seven o'clock tonight, we have our third Hall of Fame video tribute of the week. This is a pre-recorded salute to the 2021 Academic All-American Hall of Fame class. You can watch that on the All -Ameri academicallamerica.com YouTube channel. Once again, academicallamerica.com YouTube channel. And it's a great lineup of award winners. Uh, you'll hear from Billie Jean King, who is the Dick Enberg Award recipient. Also Hall of Famers are Adam Vinatieri, South Dakota State, Dr. Myron Roll, Florida State, Dr. Nikki Pesink, McDaniel, and Ann Smith, Florida. Once again, 
Please go to the attendee hub to see more on the upcoming sessions and special events throughout convention week. Thank you again for joining us today.